Hi everyone, let's first go over the application of Specraft on vocals. Let's listen to the following extract. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. For this extract, I think there are two frequency bands that do not sound so pleasant, one in the mid lows, another in the highs. Now let's look at this straight line in the middle. It's called the priority curve. It determines the amount of processing that will be applied at different frequencies. We can click on the little headphone button to locate those two unpleasant frequencies. I trusted the process of you in my heart. Yes, we have some muddy booms here. And another one um, around here, some very harsh thrills. This vocalist sounds very bright, which in this case may be a problem. Now, the basic operation of Specraft is very simple. Just drag the threshold line below the frequency peaks that you find problematic. As anything rises above the threshold will get processed. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. As you can see, around the mid lows and the highs, some green curves are extending downwards. That is indicating that some processing has already taken place. I trusted the process of you in my heart. If you are not sure whether Specraft is applying your target processing, you can click on this headphone button to solo out only the processed part of the audio. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. As you can hear, the mids are being processed. Across the high frequencies, we have some sibilance taken care of as well. However, I feel like this is not enough. As mentioned earlier, we can adjust the priority curve. Double click and let's solo out here. Listen again. I trusted the process. Yes, here. And another one. Double click, solo out. Yep, these two positions. After locating them, these two frequency bands will get prioritized in Specraft's processing. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. As you can see, these two positions get suppressed more heavily. As the amount of processing increases, the threshold line doesn't need to be that low. It can be readjusted. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. I think this is pretty good already. We have solved the problems with these two frequency bands. Just one more thing. I think I still hear some sibilance problem. In this case, I can create a high shelf on the priority curve so that the whole high frequency can be prioritized. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. You can hear that all the tss -tss sound in the high frequencies have been suppressed. However, because of the suppression, the high frequencies now feel lacking. This is where the three compensation knobs come to use. In this case, as we want to restore high frequencies, we can use treble compensation. By default, its value is 25%, but as we have a lot of processing going on over the high frequencies, we can dial it up to around 60. And then, along with the downward curve that indicates suppression, you will also see an upward curve that indicates compensation. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. And now we can see the high frequencies have been restored, but the sibilance remained suppressed. This approach, as shown on the logo, is called Cut Narrow, Boost Wide. It is very effective as our cuts are specific, while our boosts are general. With this approach, we can preserve the spectral character of the audio while surgically suppressing unwanted resonances. 
The same applies to low mids. We've mentioned the boominess problem here. I trusted the process of you in my heart. And indeed, we've applied heavy suppression to it. However, after the suppression, I feel like the formant around this frequency band、uh, sound flattened. If we are okay with it, we can just move on. But if we want to bring it back, there is a knob designed just for that: the formant compensation knob. We can try dialing it up by a little bit, and it will automatically restore the formant lost due to resonance suppression. But then knew that you wouldn't stay. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. As you can see, the suppression happening over here has triggered a very broad boost across the low mids, which actually kind of grows back the flattened formants. In the meantime, we can adjust these other knobs as well. For example, say we are now aiming for an even heavier processing, we can just turn up ratio. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. Actually, this is kind of overdoing it. We should bring it back. Now let's look at the other problem. As we can see from the waveform of this track, the volume seems fluctuating, making a static threshold line difficult to manage in all situations. In this case, we can try turning up adaptive threshold just by a bit. Now the threshold line will adapt dynamically based on your original threshold setting and the current volume of the audio content. Let's listen. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. You can see the threshold line bouncing along with the audio content. At zero percent adaptive, the threshold line will be fully static on your set position. At 100%, your set value will be disabled, and the threshold will be fully controlled by the algorithm. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. I think that's unnecessary. Let's just keep it at、mm, 30%. Now let's move on to knee. This is very similar to the same parameter on compressors. You can choose to have a hard knee or a soft knee, with a higher value indicating a softer knee. The previous setting we have sounds pretty good. Let's just lower it down、uh, to see what a hard knee sounds like. I trusted the process of you in my heart. Hmm, also pretty good. Let's keep it. Now let's look at the Q knob. It controls how narrow the suppression curves are, with a higher value indicating narrower cuts. Heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. Seems like sixty percent is pretty good. Now attack and release, also very similar to the ones on compressors. They control the response time of the processing against the audio. Actually, I've been feeling the attack was too long, which causes some transient resonances to escape. We can try lower it down. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. Personally, I much more prefer faster response like this. Okay, so that concludes all the basic operation of Specraft, and the vocal now sounds quite decent. But there's actually one more thing we can try out, and it's very fun. So far, the threshold line we've seen are all straight and flat. But it doesn't have to be like that. What if I want a curved threshold line? Well, click on profiling and find out. Now we can choose from the preset selector, vocal, yeah, and pop female vocal. Let's try it out. Yes, the threshold curve is now updated. This is actually a frequency response curve that Specraft deems typical or ideal for this type of audio content. 
there's this additional depth control, which determines how much does the threshold curve conform to the ideal frequency response. 30% is a good starting point. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. I think the vocal sounds even better now. We can compare the sound before and after Speckcraft's processing. Here's before. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay. Now after. I trusted the process of you in my heart, but then knew that you wouldn't stay.